You're listening to Gamers Digest, a podcast where your hosts put the controllers down just long enough to talk about gaming news, rumors, and anything else they can think of. Here are your hosts, Spider One and Mr. Factastic. The mic's on, but the light's also on. There we go. Now they're into our secret. Now they know that we're actually sitting next to each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. We are Gamers Digest. We are Welcome. a fan podcast. Good morning or good good evening. Good good whatever. Wherever good you are, yeah. Yeah. You know they could. Be How like, are you? They could be watching it later down the road. Mm-hmm. It could be yeah. like morning, or it could be a night shift, or you don't. You don't hmm. think about these things. No, no, I think about expanding our audience from three Maybe. to seven. We need to <laughs> figure out a way how to, uh, you know, well, well, I guess we could just say welcome. 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 We we talk about video games, video game news, reviews, previews maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, discussion topics. Discussion topics when there aren't really any news. <laughs> yeah. Today was kind of a, or not, well, this week was kind of a, a short s- news. You would think with Comic Con there would be more news, but it was all TV or movies. Yeah, it was. Well, there was a few game stories, but they weren't. They didn't really jump out. No. So. They're like, here, look at games we've already announced that you already know about mm-hmm. uh, that you're probably gonna buy anyway. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. So, uh, well, let's get started with our our first segment. Uh, basically, we go uh, back and forth on what we've played this week. Mm-hmm. So, what did you play this week? Uh, this week I played a little bit of Tomb Raider. Garden of Light, just a little bit. Um, it's it's one of those new, it's one of those free PlayStation games for uh, PlayStation Network games for PlayStation Plus subscribers. So I picked that game up. I also downloaded Renegade Ops, but I didn't play it yet. <laughs> and I and I played the hell out of uh, Dragon's Dogma for PS3, and it's very very good game. Now the, the I well I enjoyed it a lot. The the well. Yeah, we should put that out there now. That's actually going to be our review. Yeah. And for the first time ever, we're going to do a co-review. Yeah. Because we both played it, mm-hmm. and we're both going to review it, and we both have very different but very much the same take on it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, now Tomb Raider, Guardian of the Light, is like the top-down isometric shooter, yeah, right? It's a, yeah, the, the twin-stick shooter. Right. Yeah. So, it's not really a Tomb Raider game as much no. as it's like... No. Never, or not never did. Um, what's... Dead no. Nation. Yeah, Dead Nation. Yeah, it's like Dead Nation. You're just not fighting zombies. You're fighting <laughs> all kinds of things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, now you said what was the second one? There's what is it? Renegade Ops. Yeah, Renegade Ops. That's but you didn't get to play with that. I yet. didn't really play it. Uh, I downloaded it, but that also I I watched a little preview and it also looks like a twin sticks type shooter. So PlayStation seems to have a lot of those. And mm-hmm. They have a lot of good ones. So yeah, I don't know. We we could uh. I might check it out. Those are the free ones. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, those are the and free ones. Dragon's Dogma we'll, we'll talk about later, so we'll mm-hmm. yeah. skip over that one for now. So uh, I also play Dragon's Dogma. Um, I also played The Witcher 2. Uh, this week is actually Steam's annual summer sale, because they really don't want us to go outside and see the sun. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, I picked up The Witcher 2. I picked up an indie bundle. I picked up... Um, Grand Theft Auto 4 for five dollars. Wow! Which uh, we might report on something cool going on with that next week uh, that I found out about, and I think that's it so far. But they they have like a lot of ridiculous sales. Like you can pick up almost new games. Like they had Max Payne 3 for like 20 bucks. Wow! So this is definitely a time uh, if there's a lot of games you missed, pick them up. And we'll actually talk about that later in news, how uh, it's actually a little easier to pick it up now. Yeah. I'm um, going to scroll down and look at the news really quick. <laughs> wasn't there, um, there, I, I, I thought I read somewhere that there was like kind of like a complaint against uh, Steam selling these games like with such ridiculous they, uh, sales or something like that. They get those complaints occasionally. But it's part of their, I guess it's part of their agreement with the publishers and the developers that they can do this uh, every so often. But you got to remember, a lot of these sales, um, they have daily sales, but a lot of them are like flash sales. Mm-hmm. Like The Witcher 2, where I picked up for $10, um, was a one-hour only sale. And the only reason I knew about it is because I, I follow, you know, a lot of game 
I guess, internet celebrities. Uh, what we're trying to achieve here on like Twitter, on Twitter, and you know, one of them is PC gaming only, uh, Total Biscuit, who's king of the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he he tweeted on there. He's like, if you want Witcher two, hour long flash sale, go pick it up. So that's that's the only way I knew about it. So if you're if you're a Steam junkie or like I said, if you've missed some games, you should definitely check out uh, the Steam sale. Uh, unfortunately, I really only got to play Witcher two for like an hour because. World of Warcraft's beta dropped a uh, 20 gigabyte patch hmm. last Friday, and it included uh, Pet Battles, which is basically World of Warcraft Pokemon, which is actually going to lead us into our discussion topic of game ripoffs and how far is too far. Yeah. Um, and we actually had some... Saw, I saw a little bit of that uh, WoW Pokemon. and uh, I got it, video for you, so... It was awkward. We'll, we'll, we'll show it to you. Uh, the other thing is I actually got into another beta this week, one that I wasn't really <laughs> expecting... Um, the Little Big Planet karting beta, which is basically Mario Kart with Little Big Planet on PlayStation, mm -hmm. and I was actually pretty impressed with it. I mean, it looked it looked impressive from what I saw, and I like the I like how you can just like Little Big Planet, you can create your own right like go karting. Maps. You you can do anything you want. You can create obviously you can mess with your sack boy. Uh, there's all kinds of different go karts that you can use. Um, everything from the traditional like part to I was using a hovercraft microphone. Yeah. So <laughs> and you can build your own yeah, hovercraft. It, in in the in the full version they say you can build your own um in the in the beta you can't build your own cart and you can't really customize the stack boy. They give you like a, a good amount of options. I'd say probably about 20 options for each. So you're you're definitely not, you know, shoehorned into like three. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Um but in the in the beta you can create your own tracks. Um, you know, from scratch. And I'm sure, you know, in the full version, they'll have more tools available. Yeah. And I, I barely got into that. I, I really didn't have enough time. So I might report on that next week, which was kind of the hint to the previews. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. I miss games where you could do stuff like that. Uh, you know, like, remember Time Splitters? Mm -hmm. the, they, they had the level creator in there. That was really cool. Yeah, I actually, um, one of my favorite Xbox Live games is uh, Trials, which... I actually, okay. Yeah. That actually streamed, and that has a really robust creator. And the newest one, Trials Evolution, that creator just took it above and beyond. Like you can do anything you want in that creator now. So cool. um, that would definitely be the first thing I pick up on an Xbox. Now uh, you said you might be getting an Xbox. Yeah, I might be getting an Xbox tomorrow. Maybe uh, I was, I did stop by to pick it up today, but um, <laughs> there were there were some cords missing or something like that. So. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually pick, gonna get one from my brother, so it'd be nice to for the low, low price of nothing. For the low, low price of nothing. We might have to borrow that and put trials on it, and that yeah. might that might sedate me enough to not have to buy an Xbox. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's go hop into some news. News and rumors. All right. You're actually gonna take the first story so uh what do we got going on in uh hd collection bill we have uh the ratchet and clank collection it's going to be coming here to the united states on august 20th uh, august 28th and it's already out for in other territories like overseas and stuff and as a token for waiting for this collection i'll pull up the list of which games are in the collection but it also comes with a demo for uh, Sly 4, I believe. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm a big fan of the Sly Cooper series, so... I never played them, so, but, I mean, I remember the commercials and stuff. It, it, it looked <laughs> cool. I mean, I like the art style and stuff. So, what, the, the next Sly Cooper game's called Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. Okay. It's like Turtles in Time. Yeah. Let's see, the games are Ratchet and Clank, Ratchet and Clank Going Commando, and Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal. That, I mean, there's been so many Ratchet and Clank. Now, those are like the primarily uh, the PS2 games, right? Those were like the main trilogy. I think, I think so. so. I think so. I only ever played the first two, which they definitely have on there. Mm -hmm. um, and then they started going into like the PSP games and yeah, then all the, kinds of stuff the like PlayStation that. PlayStation Network so. style or right. like space games. So Don't they have like some type of racing game or something? I, Nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts and yeah, the, like the co-op stuff. stuff. Right. Yeah. So um, they actually just announced that uh, Jack and Daxter, which I know is not Ratchet and Clank, 
Dexter. Jack and Dexter are actually characters in PlayStation All Stars, as That's well as right. Cole yeah, McGrath. Th- yeah, we call. Yeah, we call. We call. <laughs> we also call Jack and Dexter. Though, That's right. right. Yeah. So and Ratchet and Clank. So yeah. We'll uh we'll have to see. Did they do? Did they? Sack Boys in it, right? Yeah, and Sack yeah. Boy. Um, now the the main reason I wanted to include this story is uh, they're giving you the demo to Sly for as U.S. customers because uh, they had to wait. We had to wait, yeah, because mm-hmm. it came out like real early in um, in Europe and stuff. But the the main draw of this story for me was that they're including that Sly Cooper 4 demo, and we're seeing this a lot. Like Dragon's Dogma, if you have Dragon's Dogma, you get in the Resident Evil 6 demo. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's actually online either yesterday or today, and you know news are so slow, this almost made it as a full news story. <laughs> <laughs> But yesterday, if you uh, pre-ordered Warfighter online, you get access to Battlefield 4 beta. So that's how hmm. they they kind of announced Battlefield yeah, 4. Yeah, I mean, cause, I mean, the, these times, you know, it's uh, it's it's tough to spend the money, especially if you're gonna buy like these older games. You know what I mean? Right. So, but yeah, it does remind me of the whole the carrot on the stick to like you know dangle it out there so we can right, you're like, yeah, maybe I'll spend this extra. Right, money. like if um, like Devil May Cry's HD collection, if that included the demo to Devil May Cry, the new one, I might be more inclined to buy that HD collection. Mm-hmm. So I actually think it's a pretty cool uh, carrot on the stick that really doesn't take any yeah. extra work on it. Yeah, I mean, part. I remember uh, back in the day how they used to do this, where like you know, Resident, like if you bought Dino Crisis, it came with a demo for Resident Evil Three, which was like that's what that's what companies used to do to right. kind of help sell their games that they weren't too sure about. Like I remember the biggest, the biggest instance of this was when uh, Brave Fencer Musashi mm-hmm. had a demo to Final Fantasy VIII. You remember that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I never would have played Brave Fencer Musashi if it wasn't for uh, that Final <laughs> Fantasy VIII demo, and I ended up really liking it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, that is. Uh, I, on a side note, I actually really like Brave Fencer Musashi. Yeah, that was a, so. <laughs> that was a really cool game. Too bad they messed it up with the sequel. Yeah. We, we don't talk about it. <laughs> All right, so um, moving on. Uh, the Speaking of getting Xboxes, I guess this kind of goes into that. Uh, <laughs> the Halo 4 console uh, is actually available for pre-order, and then it was taken down, and then it was put back up to be available for pre-order. Uh, so now it is actually available for pre-order. Uh, the basics are it's $399. Uh, that includes two controllers. Two, let me make sure I get it on the camera. Two controllers, a headset, uh, a custom Xbox that makes uh, special lights and sounds when you insert an ejected disc. Uh, it's also a 320 gigabyte system. Uh, I really wanted to get a picture of it, but I completely forgot. Uh, but it is actually really awesome looking. How did, did you get a chance to take a look yeah, at I it? Yeah, I didn't look at it. It uh, it actually is really cool looking. Um, if if I was gonna buy an Xbox, I I might swing for that one. No, I'm I. Thought I saw somewhere that there was this uh, N7 Xbox, and it had like all this gear on it. I mean, it might have been like a custom built one or something like that, but that, right. that also looked really cool. I've seen I've seen like the custom built Iron Man Xbox, which that was pretty cool. Um, but I don't know about an N7. Yeah, I have to I have to find it. I I saw it yesterday when I was looking for uh, some screenshots. But like looking at the pictures of this one now, uh, which I really wish I could put it up there mm-hmm. for you. Uh, but it really looks like they're up in the game for like the custom console. Yeah. Too. You remember like the Final Fantasy 13 console? It was like a white Xbox with, with like a, a logo on it. on it. Yeah. Whereas this is like. I also like custom. the other. I also like the Halo 3 Xbox, the green one. I thought that was pretty neat. That though. was cool too. This yeah. is like the next evolution of that. Yeah. This definitely has that more like Forerunner mm-hmm. feel. Yeah. <laughs> so I. Forerunner, Halo 4. Yeah. I also I forgot to mention it. It does include Halo 4, but it's only the standard edition. So if you want the custom Xbox with the collector's edition, it's going to be like 900 bucks. So Something like that, yeah. Or it, it'll, it'll cost as much as a Wii U. Right. <laughs> half a half a half a controller for a Wii U. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you got a you got you got some money talk for us. Uh, let's see. Vivendi is finally finding it hard to uh, sell Activision. Now, we talked about this a little bit, maybe like a couple, a few weeks ago. We mentioned right. how you know 
Activision may be sold, and how much were they worth? Like ten billion. Ten billion. Ten dollars. ten billion dollars. So <laughs> really, there's not many people out there that can afford the Vendi. But you're not putting a bid in. No, I yeah. can. No. You don't. You know. No. But you don't. I, want, I don't. I don't even want to make fun of how much I made. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. It uh. That's a lot of money that for a is company. A, that is a now, lot of money. I didn't put this in the show notes, and this is my fault to you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Vivendi is actually $15 billion in debt. So oh. that's why they're looking to sell. I found that out after mm. I read the show notes. Uh, so that would be uh, two-thirds of their debt. That kind of sucks. Yeah. I guess, <laughs> whatever. Are people not, they don't like Call of Duty as much anymore? It's, or not as much as we it, thought they would? Yeah. <laughs> You know I listen to a lot of podcasts, yeah. so uh, I've been I've been listening to a lot, and um, they're actually talking about this a lot, even in specific podcasts like World of Warcraft podcast, because mm-hmm. obviously Activision owns Blizzard. Yeah. But the um, the thing is, like Call of Duty is their big franchise, right? Uh, but to get Call of Duty to be that big of a franchise, their marketing budget alone is so huge that there are rumors that the game sales hardly offset the marketing budget. Like, the whole the whole point of Call of Duty is that's their flagship. So hopefully people see, like, Activision and stuff like that, so they'll buy other Activision games. Mm. So Call of Duty, and, you know, who knows if this is true, but they say Call of Duty actually, in the end, barely makes them any money, even being the best-selling video game in the world. Well, that's why they suck. Right. <laughs> so, uh, it's it's. I apologize it's a, to those I may have offended, but <laughs> it's a, not it's a, a fan. it's a branding. Yeah. Thing, so, yeah. and I, I uh, I'm right there with you that the current Call of Duties are quite a letdown. But I really enjoyed the older ones and even yeah. Modern Warfare. I'd say even up to Modern Warfare Two, I enjoyed. Yeah, I mean, it, I enjoyed. Yeah, it I wasn't groundbreaking. Yeah, but yeah. It was polished. It played well. Um, but I've always been a Halo fan for multiplayer, so I was never big into the multiplayer. So, That's but. interesting. Um, so there's an interesting theory about... Uh, well, who who's actually on the list? Oh, who's on the list of who can buy, afford it, really? Yeah, or a potential it, buyer? It's, a, it's a short list. Yeah, it's a very short list. There's uh, Microsoft and Time Warner. And um, Disney Disney's well. un- yeah, yeah, Disney as well, but they're unlikely to make any bid. They're, Disney is... They used to be on like kind of like a downward slope, but they they seem to be going up. They when I think once they they started going up and then they bought Marvel, I think that was where they kind of yeah they they're they're in a good position right and now. Now they, that they have Pixar back, you know they're just yeah they the they don't need to. This isn't the risk that they really have to take, right. you know. So they're they're in they're in a good they're in good shape. Now uh, now you said one of the main people that are are thinking of buying it are Microsoft. Um, which is the whole the whole theory we're getting to. Yeah. Uh, you want to do the theory or? Uh, you, you can do the theory. <laughs> All right. So the the whole theory behind it is, uh, Microsoft's biggest selling uh, console game was Halo, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's always been Halo. Anybody can say Gears of War, and yeah. stuff like that, but it's Halo. Halo yeah. is what sold the original Xbox. It's what people pushed for the Xbox 360. It's what people are going to push for the Xbox 360 when it's in the eighth year of its life. Mm-hmm. So, um, but Bungie uh, stopped making Halo after Halo Reach, uh, the new Halo 4 is actually made by 343 Studios, which mm-hmm. is a Microsoft-owned company. Uh, Bungie was Microsoft-owned, uh, and well, first they weren't Microsoft-owned, and they made PC games. Yeah. And then they bought were bought out by Microsoft, made Halo, up to Halo Reach, and then they went out and said, we want to do our own thing. And they were bought by Activision. Mm-hmm. And stuff has come out about their new game coming out. Um, but if Activision's bought by Microsoft, then Microsoft reacquires Bungie. Yep. And it's kind of like this roundabout way of... Uh, Make like, our game. Right. And it, it's kind of funny, like, um, say, like, your girlfriend leaves you, and she's like, I'm going to move out. Uh, and you're like, where are you going to move? I'm going to buy the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a sneaky way around it, mm-hmm. so it, it's kind of funny. Now, I think if uh, Microsoft does buy Activision, um, I don't think they'll make Activision games console exclusive. Like, I don't think 
the the sales lost from Activision games being on PlayStation and Nintendo would offset the the cost of keeping it Xbox exclusive. Hmm. I just especially like Skylanders. Skylanders is a big thing in the fact that uh you know, you could take your little figure, yeah. play it on the Wii and then pick it up and go to your friend's house and play it on his PlayStation because mm-hmm. all the data is stored on the yeah. little figure. So I don't think they would do that if they bought it, uh, but who knows if they'll even buy it. Yeah, who knows? Um, that's a that's a risky a, venture. Yeah, especially once you mentioned that, that how much debt they had. So. Yeah, and uh, well, that's that's Vivendi, not really Activision. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But um, like game game publishers are having problems. Like look at THQ and all the problems they're having. Do you really want a big publisher to fold under you like that? No. No. <laughs> no. Especially not as Microsoft, because Microsoft is having its own problems with mm-hmm. Xbox sales uh, because they lost so much money up front on it. Um, new Windows is coming out. Yep. They've got new hardware coming out, which typically is a, is a loss when it first comes out. Mm-hmm. So, who, you know, I, I honestly don't think Microsoft will buy it. I think of all of these companies uh, listed, uh, Time Warner... And um, there's another company called Tencent, which actually has a little bit of ownership in about everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just nobody knows about them. <laughs> Interesting. So, so, well, that's, that's, so that's what we got to do in order to get rich. we got to own a little bit of everything. Right. That's what they do. Tencent actually owns, like, they own, like, Zam, TankSpot, um, you know, all kinds of, like, multimedia online website hmm. companies. Like, they own small shares. So they're... they're a Chinese-based company that's slowly taking over everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but speaking of another company that's taking over everything, uh, yeah. Let's see. All right. So, uh, right now, uh, we we had actually reported on it. Uh, I guess a few weeks ago, I guess almost a month ago now, um, that in GameStop you can start buying the uh, what was it? The Steam Cash. Uh, in GameStop to use on Steam on your PC, but right now GameStop's actually holding a uh, what is it like a promotion where you can bring games in and you get a 30% trade-in credit if you put it towards Steam Cash. So your your used games can actually make you a lot of money on Steam hmm. because of a the bonus and b the sale. So that's actually pretty cool. The downside is people that are used to trading in games uh, they can't anymore after that. They, they hit that brick wall of digital, yeah, you know, which kind of goes with what we said last night or last week. But um, so I, I I wanted to throw that in there a because it's a slow news week and b yeah. um, for everybody that's kind of game savvy. If you have a PC that can play some games and you want to play games like Witcher Two or something, and you only own a PlayStation and they refuse to put it out on PlayStation, uh, but you do have a PC. Uh, yeah, pick it up. that would be cool. Like, I, I really want to play Witcher 2. I might just wait for the Xbox version. Well, the Xbox uh, version's out. Yeah. Well, I don't have oh, an Xbox right, yet. Oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Long day. So, <laughs> it's been, yeah, it's been a long day. A hot long day, week. As, you, as you probably noticed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, why don't you kick us... This is actually a pretty big story. We might yeah. spend a little bit of time on this one, so uh, dive away. Okay, there's this new... Uh, uh, let me just read the headline. Ouya has the biggest Kickstarter day ever. Basically, ever. Ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I looked at the numbers. I'm actually... Uh, the reason I was interested in this story is because I ran a Kickstarter um, project way... Like before couple, Kickstarter was cool. Yeah, before Kickstarter was cool. <laughs> and I, I didnn't raise my goal, but I raised about, what, five, seven thousand dollars 7000 And, uh, wait, let me explain how Kickstarter works. Yeah. Basically... It's a website where people can sh- like share their ideas, and the the internet people on the internet can watch the video and you know donate towards your goal. Right. You can you pick a time frame from 30 days to or from like one week to I think three months. Yeah. And you can raise up to your goal, whatever you set your goal is for that project. It can be a book you're writing, a movie you're doing, any type of creative project. And um, the the catch is, if you don't reach your goal, you don't get any of the funding. So right. it's like, you know, end all, be all, you know. Right. So 
I I I raised about five seven thousand dollars before in the past, but I never reached my goal, so I never got that money to work on my project. But this project right here, they need they wanted to raise um was it nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They they made over their, a month. Yeah, over a month. They reached their goal in eight hours, and right now it's almost uh it's over like five million. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah, check it today. Five, yeah, it's five five million. I mean. It's really uh, this. It's really neat. This project, this Ouya project. Basically, it's an open source console that has like an Android. Yeah, it's based off a of Android uh, operating system. Yeah, Android operating system. Um, it's free to every game is free to play. The micro uh, transactions are up to the developers. Um, it looks like a very neat idea. Like the way the way mobile gaming is so popular, like uh, yeah. like on our phones and stuff. This is basically. Expanding. It, yes, expanding on that and putting it on our televisions. So I mean, it's they It comes with a controller, and they already have a prototype that works. You know, they're just working on getting it out there for all. Right, the they're getting the hardware together, and the hardware was really impressive because it's like a, it's almost like a low-end gaming PC. Basically, so I mean, imagine as much as you like. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna choose a stupid example. Uh, Angry Birds or something, Woo! or Tower Defense, whatever. Um, you can, <laughs> you can basically, you can play that on your television. Right. And it just, this, I mean, this was, I watched the video, I, I recommend anybody out there to watch this video and look at this pitch. Um, yeah, it's, it's impressive. They put a lot of work mm -hmm. into it. I mean, and they're, they're trying to sell the console for $100. Right now, they're, they've sold out of their initial line of... And then three lines after that. Yeah, exactly, actually sold yeah. Out. <laughs> I mean, it's... Uh, it's insane, and... Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, I, I frequent Kickstarter just to kind of see what's going on, um, and this this story actually came just through other means, um, and we'll we'll have a link on the web page to yeah definitely uh, check the out the Uya video I mean and see this com this startup company and I yes mean, it's, uh, it's pretty cool because it's gonna be like, um, PlayStation Network or Xbox Live in a console, mm -hmm. but it's. It's going to be like that, plus like the App Store. Yes. And um, Google Play, which is the Android App Store, has actually been pretty impressive recently. They're they're really expanding upon that, so that's pretty cool. I think you can watch Twitch TV on there. Yep. Um, I actually, have that on the on the on the tablet right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's I mean, we could do our podcast off the Ouya, right? Yeah. You could. So. Yeah. And people could like watch it on there. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 supposed to be like an all-in-one media box, and it's like hackable. So you know, and, oh, you remember the Net Yorose? Mm -hmm. It's basically like a developer kit. Like you right. can create games for this system, and you know, just make it easier. Like that's, now, yeah. that's what that's what's really cool. So that's actually what I really like about the Xbox Marketplace right now is they have that uh, game creator kit. Yeah, and obviously it's not anything crazy, um, but a lot of good games have come out of that. And, you know, they have a competition every year to see what people want. And this could lead to the same thing. This could lead to, uh, like, we're currently undergoing it a little bit, but, like, the indie revolution. Yeah. Where, you know, maybe these big companies like we just talked about, like THQ, Activision, EA, uh, maybe these smaller companies are going to start pushing them out because, you know, they're, they're not as, I guess, committed to that bottom line. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not spending millions of dollars on... Commercials with, you know, uh, Eminem singing in them. Eminem and Jonah Hill and yeah. stuff, which I think Jonah Hill's funny. But you know, to make the point, <laughs> um, they're they're spending all of their money, and a lot of these indie developers don't have a lot of money to make a game. Like mm -hmm. uh, Fez is a good example. Like that guy poured all his money into Fez, um, which the creator of Fez is actually kind of a douchebag, but <laughs> uh, he kind of let it go to his head. But he, he made a good game because he put a lot of work into it. Mm -hmm. So that, it, it, I'm excited for it. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I watched the video and I wanted an Ouya. Right. And so. I, I'm excited just for a console that can get off the ground that isn't made by a major corporation. Yeah. So. It's, it's kind of going back to that. This is, I, th I really, I mean, just look look at the, uh, the response to the Kickstarter right. uh, as a, as like a micro- Example of the macro scale that this can get to. Right. 
I think this is really going to blow up into something huge. And he, what's, like, what I'm saying, what I think is really cool is it's almost like that make it or break it type of thing. Like, uh, you know, Sony's going to come out with a new console, and it's going to sell because it's a Sony console. Microsoft's mm-hmm. going to come out with a new console, and it's going to sell because it's a Microsoft console. These guys are going to come out with a console, and it's going to sell because people want to buy it. Mm-hmm. It's going to sell because it's and a it's good cheap. console. Right, and it's cheap. So uh, it 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 kind of goes back to the like the '80s after the, the video game crash, which you know you and I were both pretty young during that. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of what I know about it is read after the fact. But it's like Nintendo had to sell that Nintendo the Nintendo Entertainment System, or it was gone. Sega had to sell that. Mm-hmm. So thank you, ET the game. Yeah. Uh, so the last. Last piece of news, we, we talk about Star Wars The Old Republic on and off time to time. Um, and unfortunately, it's kind of been bad news all around. Uh, the, uh, is the newest batch of bad news is the co-founder, producer, and vice president of BioWare um, has actually left the company. Uh, he actually was part of a, a bigger round of layoffs in BioWare Austin, but uh, he he actually left before the layoffs hit, but they have hit now, so uh, it kind of sucks for those guys. Uh, his name was Rich Vogel. He actually founded, uh, well, co-founded Bioware Austin in 2005, and actually helped beef the studio's headcount up from eight to over 350. So most mm-hmm. of that was for Star Wars: The Old Republic. Uh, I, this actually comes after the news of they've lost 400,000 more subscribers, which actually I believe puts them under the million mark. Mm. Um, still profitable for EA, but definitely you know not what they were shooting for. Yeah. Uh, and they're actually actively considering the free-to-play model even more now, which that could bring uh, in a lot of people. Isn't it free-to-play like up to level 15? Yeah, something like that now. And they actually uh, just re-released, uh, like I don't say release because it's not really a release, but they they sent out like invites to people who played before, and they get it like a free week or something. And uh, I actually missed that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I let my subscription drop just because of the fact that I, I actually really enjoyed the game. Um, and it, it did have its problems, <laughs> which well, I've talked about. While we're on the topic of uh, uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, uh, during Comic-Con they announced, they announced that video where they're adding the HK-51. Yeah, I did see that. Because uh, uh, anybody who watches... Spoiler alerts, HK-47 actually comes back in the game. Like, you meet Revan in HK-47. Unfortunately, the two times that you meet to HK-47, he tries to kill you. <laughs> so you're kind of forced to kill him both times. Uh, so they couldn't really put him in the game, but HK-51 yeah. is pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Same voice, same attitude. Which I really liked HK-47. Uh, he gets a little weird in the expanded universe, but in the games he was really good. <laughs> so, um, but that's actually... It for the news. Like I said, it was a really slow news, news week. week. Yeah. Um, we do have a discussion topic though, and uh, depending on, I, I don't think our reviews will take as long this week because we're kind of doing it together. Yeah, we're doing the same. So time. that's kind of why I wanted to throw the discussion topic in there. Uh, the discussion topic is actually going to be about uh, video game ripoffs and how far is too far. Uh, yeah. I was personally driven to to put this story in there. After seeing the World of Warcraft Pokemon, um, World of Warcraft Pet Battles, uh, in which, <laughs> don't get me wrong, they're actually really enjoyable, and they're a lot of fun, but they're definitely Pokemon. Like, yeah. They're, there are, like, over 400 pets to collect of varying, you know, types. Like, you got, like, <laughs> Elemental, you've got, like, <laughs> Critter, Beast, Humanoid, and they're all weak and strong versus others, and they all have their own abilities, and got a team of three. Do, and they, do, it, do they evolve? No. Oh. Yeah, because they're they're building off the current like uh, non-combat pet system. Oh. Okay. So there's a lot of pets in the game already. Just currently on live, they don't do anything. Oh. It's like you're a big bad orc warrior with a little tabby cat following behind you. So it's kind of funny. But oh. this was kind of their way of expanding upon that. Um, but the funniest thing is there there aren't pokeballs. There's actually a uh, and it it might be in the video we have, but there's actually you throw like a crate on them. <laughs> to catch them. Awesome. So, uh, but what I actually <laughs> want to talk about that one a little more last uh, because those are the video 
Um, now, you, you've you done a little bit of mobile gaming. Have you seen any, like, the mobile gaming uh, rip-offs? Because that's actually where it's really, really blatant. Like, Gameloft is, it, I... is very blatant. <laughs> I haven't played them t- too much, but like, like I said, like tower, de- like once you played one tower defense game, you kind of played them all. Right. And and Angry Bird style games. Yeah, and- let me. I guess this is a good preface. Um, game innovation and taking ideas and expanding on them is fine. We wouldn't be anywhere today if that didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have Halo if you didn't have Doom. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have a kitten yelling behind me if he was. Not hungry, but uh. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. What is it? Oh yeah, Halo without Doom. So that that's one thing. But these are like blatant ripoffs. Like th- that's what I really wanted to talk about. Like the the innovation is one thing, and there were some games in here. Uh, like I actually have Asphalt listed. Um, I'm not really gonna bring that one up too much. Okay. Because, uh, racing games are. Pretty much the same. Yeah, they just get prettier. All, yeah, they just get prettier. Sometimes they'll like they'll, they'll be the crashing ones. You know, right. Really cool so crashes. I, I'm not really going to talk about that one. Um, Modern Combat, however, is Game Loss version of Modern Warfare. Okay. Obviously, uh, which we actually have a couple of pictures of that. Yeah, I want to so see this. We. So there you go. On the left is actually uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. On the right is Modern Combat. <laughs> huh. Looks, uh... Actually, this is how good they are. Actually, on the right is Call of Duty, and on the left is Modern Combat. So... Wow. Yeah, there you go. The, and it basically, the the thing is, the, um, the thing is, they're so much alike that, you know, game companies are like, hey, you know, why are you taking my game? And they change enough stuff uh-huh. to kind of get away with it. Uh, the next one we have is actually really blatant, which is actually Tiny Tower and Zanga's version, which is like Topple Tower or something, which the original, uh, there you go. Actually, I took this off a website. That is like the same game. Yeah. They, Zanga just has more money, so they up the graphics a little bit. But look, I mean, you can even see the numbers on the left are the same versus the elevator, what's in the apartments and everything. So that, yeah, that's that really... Is, that is... Wow, this is alarming. (laughs) Wait. All right. Now. Uh, Crap. Did I not put it in here? Oh, I put them side by side. Okay. On the uh, the left, you have Halo 3. On the right, you have Nova 2. What? Yeah, this is... Yeah. Now, you can really look at that, and I actually really wanted a Halo picture with a rocket launcher, but I couldn't find it. (laughs) Uh, But you can actually look... uh, up in the upper right of each of them, they have the weapon. Uh, in the middle is actually the shield gauge. Uh, the only difference is because on the right is Nova, which is a mobile game. You have the mobile controls in the lower right. So it yeah, is that, like... Yeah, that is really... Right, and th- that's what I'm kind of getting at, is um, these games are like blatant rip-offs. And, you know, people have called them out, like Tiny Tower called out Zango for it. And oh, yeah. There's that, actually that a lawsuit looked, that, for that. That looked... That looked really bad. I thought it was like a different level. Right. <laughs> no, they, yeah, there are two different games. And it's happening a lot in mobile game space. Like, um, that is really bad. Have you ever seen Splosion Man for uh, for no. Xbox Live? No. Okay. I, I wanted to get that one, but I ran out of time. But uh, basically, somebody ripped off Splosion Man and put it on mobile. And the problem is, what's happening is uh, these game publishers are actually, like, Tiny Tower is one thing, because it was made as a mobile game. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, say Microsoft wants to bring Halo to mobile platforms. Yeah. Nova's already there, and it's pretty much the same game. So, and there, there's even been some cases where companies will name it almost the same thing. Like, uh, instead of block destroy, it's block drop. So people are like, yeah, block, and they it, say, oh. Oh, wait, like, uh, instead of brick breaker, there's block breaker. Right, stuff okay, like that. Okay, yeah. So, it, it's... Knockbusters. Right. So... <laughs> Um, but to bring us back to the original is, uh, actually the World of Warcraft Pokemon. Now, I'm going to show you Pokemon Black and White first. Uh, I probably won't play the whole video just because of the fact that it's actually a really long video, but we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and play that. Mm-hmm. 
now. Man, the graphics have gotten a lot better yeah. since I played it. Yeah, it makes me like really want to play this. Alright, so they uh they all do attacks, it's all in Japanese. Is this black and uh, black? This is the the one that's out now. Okay. Black and white. Not the uh, black and white too. Yeah. So it's super effective. I know that's what that said. <laughs> nice. Anyway, you get the idea there. Yeah. All right, now I'm actually going to show you World of Warcraft Pokemon, and uh, this is my character, which you'll probably see me on if you watch the live stream sometimes. I've got my ghostly skull, and I'm fighting a rabbit. So, as you see, uh, you know, it's it's like the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you got all your skills at the bottom. It's just laid out a little differently because I kind of had to work it into the World of Warcraft uh, interface. So, but it, as you saw, there's like strong attacks, weak mm -hmm. attacks. There's different types. Like, if you look next to ghostly skull, you'll see like a little skull, which means that he's undead, <laughs> whereas the other one is... Uh, a little critter, or this one's a wow. humanoid, and I actually, like, see how it says weak. Mm -hmm. So you actually really get it. It's like fully evolved Pokemon, uh, and Blizzard's putting it into their game. I think we've seen enough of that. Yeah. Which that actually will be on the YouTube channel. I'm doing a tutorial for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll stop that. So the, what do you think? I mean, do you think companies can get away with this? Uh, How long is it? Now those mobile ones, those mobile ones are definitely they definitely should like get some type of like lawsuit or something like that. Right. The Pokemon for the WoW. You think it's different enough? Yeah, it's different enough, and plus like WoW has been so like has been. It's so popular at, at this and, point. And established. Like, how long has it been out? Uh, eight years. Yeah, Coming on eight years. Yeah, I mean, it's not that far off from being out for a decade. Yeah. And World of Warcraft has been built on what it's been built on. You know? Right. And this is like a side thing. Yeah, this is just a side thing. It's we don't got to pay for it real well, I mean you're paying with your subscription. But right. But it's not a, it, basically you buy the actually they said at this point you don't even need to buy the expansion to get it. Once the expansion comes out and it upgrades to version 5.0, you get pet battles. Uh you just don't get the other stuff like the Pandora and then blah blah blah. <laughs> but okay. yeah, it, I, I, and actually, you you went the completely opposite way that I thought you would. Oh. Um, I actually agree. I think the World of Warcraft Pokemon is fine. I think the other ones are, are bad. I think World of Warcraft is taking a good idea. This Pokemon is so popular, and it's saying, well, our game's popular, so what if we put them together? And World of <laughs> Warcraft's kind of been going up and down in numbers, mostly down. Uh, but mm. the last quarter, they actually stayed the same. They didn't lose any. Uh, so they're still sitting around like 10.2 million. Uh, yeah, this could be a good way to bring a lot of younger players in because, like yeah, you said, it like, is. So, is there like a special like story along with it, or what? yeah, actually, um, in the full video, I couldn't really show it in that because it's really involved. But um, you go to the trainer, you pay for the training, uh, and he gives you a quest. And the first quest is to go out and you know win a battle. Mm -hmm. So you find the critter like I did, and that's actually what quest I was on for that video we just watched. Mm -hmm. And then you fly back to him, and he says, "All right, well, now you need to know how to heal him." So he shows you how to heal your pets. Um, and then from there he says, all right, raise a, a pet to level three. So you raise a pet to level three. And at that point he actually gives you a gym challenge pretty much. Nice. He's, he says, go to this guy at this place and beat him. And you fight him. Like he has, that guy has, you know, two Pokemon that he always uses. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of say, all right, well, this guy uses critter type. So I'm going to want to use what's strong is critter type. Wow. And then when you beat that guy, he gives you the next guy. And That's so cool. on. Okay. And so yeah. on. And so on. Um, up until I think the fourth guy. And then after the fourth guy, you can beat him, but you don't get credit for beating him because it's still in beta. And okay. They, they haven't gotten that far <laughs> yet. So, but yeah, it's it's really involved. Very, so. Yeah, def definitely uh, Pokemon esque. I've, I've always wanted Nintendo to, like, 
at least make some type of Pokemon game where it wasn't like a Game Boy, like an actual like. Right, and you know, as, as we saw, World of Warcraft's graphics aren't earth shattering, but they're good. Mm -hmm. I I would say they're better than black and white. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah, I'd say they're better than black and white. I mean, black and white has that cartoony style, whereas World of Warcraft at least is 3D cartoony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, and there's there's a lot of personality in the World of Warcraft pets because, as you saw, I had everything from like uh, a ghostly skull to a deer, which I don't yeah. think we made it to the deer. Yeah, we. Didn't but get you to can the see deer the deer one. in yeah, the background. The deer one, that's what I saw. And um, yeah, I mean, there's like all kinds of stuff. Like you get, like I said, fire elementals and crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh. All right, that's cool. <laughs> that actually was perfect. So let's uh let's do our review. Reviews. So we we reviewed uh drag. Well, our review for this week is Dragon's Dogma. First joint review ever. Yeah. So uh, why don't you do your pros, and I'll uh I'll uh I'll kind of okay it. okay. Um, one of the things I liked about this game was that it wasn't a sequel of anything. It's original. Like, yeah, it's original. Like, I mean, well, it's as, it's as original as... A high fantasy RPG game. Exa yeah, exactly. <laughs> Without really ripping off anything too much. Right. I mean, No like, Pokemon. In this yeah, there's no Pokemon in it. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, it's, it's reminiscent of, like, Skyrim a little bit, you know, with the dragons, but there's only... Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, can, I can see, um... And I'll actually make this point later, but I can see where people would say, "Oh, I like free roaming games with the dragon." So I'll yeah, pick this up. yeah. Uh, I think people that go with that mindset might be a little disappointed. Yeah, they might. They <laughs> might be. A, yeah, they're 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 definitely a different game. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's not a sequel of anything. Um. Now my next point, I said, is addictive gameplay with a lot of variety. Like what I mean is, uh, me, I like the types of games where you can go in and better yourself through like collecting things see when i when i got this game i thought it was like monster hunter and in that game you you fought different types of monsters right. you were able to get items from them make uh make new armors I, I like i like leveling up a character and taking them out on adventures like that games like fallout uh elder scrolls they're they're just this game it's like okay this is a game where i can do that and it was third person, so you know, it just it just kind of uh, helps with my immersion into it. Uh, their variety comes from your just the different play styles you can do. Like right. there's like six, ranger. Yeah, six different skill um, or player types that you can use. Uh, well, there's probably only three. Well, this yeah this, yeah. <laughs> I think this is my review. There's me. There's really just three, but then there's like hybrids and like advanced yeah. forms. So yeah, I mean, it's just like there's a different style of gameplay for you. And I mean, me, I, I, I'm a, I like hack and slash games. Right. Which is funny because you picked a ranger. <laughs> and then I changed to a fighter. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I changed to a fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, a, I picked the ranger and then, I was like, no, nah, I can't do this. You don't get to climb the monsters in, as a ranger that much. No. As an assassin, yes. As an assassin, you could. But, but uh, which is actually have a, an they evolution. Have a, they, they, yeah, it's, it's one of those hybrid classes. A fighter and ranger. Yeah. Now it's cool because the assassin has this really cool move where you can climb up onto the monster and like do this gouge. It was really, really neat. Right. But um, yeah. The, the, I uh. <laughs> or you go. Yeah, I um, I agree with a lot of variety. Like the, there's play styles for everybody. Like I actually played uh, a primarily mage class, and I'm not actually not completely done with the story. Where you finished. Yeah, the I finished story. the story. I finished the story uh, over the weekend. I, I've I've made progression. Like I, I think I'm like level thirty or something now. So I feel comfortable that nice. I know how the rest of the game's gonna go. Uh, it's just gonna be more enemies that are a little harder. Um, yeah. So uh, I agree with the variety. There's a little bit here for everybody. The addicting gameplay, I can kind of counterpoint in the fact that this game is very punishing. It it actually reminded me of an MMO. Well, yeah, but. Uh, MMOs are typically easy. Um, <laughs> remind me a lot of Dark Souls. Uh, oh, how Demon Souls. That it, it's it is very punishing. Like um, you have a group. Most people go with a group of four. Some people are good enough to get away with less, but I I definitely wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember trekking up to like a bandit camp, and there's like a cyclops, 
uh, in the road. And it took me like probably three hours to pass that Cyclops because wow. what would happen is we would run in and we engage him and I would be fine and the other ranged person would be fine. But both of the, the melee fighters would keep getting knocked off the, the cliff. Oh. And uh, eventually what ended up happening is I, I ended up having to like kite him back down to a point where it was wide enough for me to feel safe that my fighters wouldn't get knocked off because you have almost no control of where they go. Yeah. Like, you can say attack, not attack, stick by me, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But as a, as a you know, as a mage, I definitely didn't want the fighters bringing a Cyclops to my doorstep. So. Yeah. <laughs> See, I never played as a, as a mage. I, I, def- I do want to try, though. Yeah. It, mage is actually really fun, and, and, and that definitely goes to the variety part. Like, you can do almost anything you want. you got maelstroms, you got lightning bolts. It, it, you feel powerful, but the addicting gameplay side of it is... It's too hard. I wouldn't say it's too hard. It's just, I think if they gave you a little more control over the pawns, it would be better. Like, it's kind of in... Or if it had multiplayer. Right. If you could do it with three other people, it would be amazing. Mm -hmm. This would probably be game of the year. It's just the pawns, the AI is really, I'd I'd say it's good, but it still has its problems. Like, there's not enough control over it. And um, I I was actually using your pawn, and your pawn really annoys me in the fact that (laughs) she's melee... But she stays, like, right next to me almost all the time. Oh. Because she's a guardian. Yeah, because, like, oh, there's a thing where you can do where you can sit down at a chair with your uh, with your pawn and give it, like, like it's Commands. like you're doing like doing an interview. Right. Like you're doing an interview I with did your do pawn. That. Yeah, and, like, one of the things I did with my pawn was, like, make sure it protects me. Right. So when your pawn, so when my pawn's with Curtis. Yeah, it, it like, protects me, but the problem is I'm a mage and I don't need a yeah. fighter standing <laughs> right next to me. When I'm trying to cast <laughs> in a Cyclops, it's like, oh. smacking me off a cliff. Yeah, that makes sense. And I was mad because your pawn was like 20 levels higher than me, <laughs> and she wasn't doing a damn thing. <laughs> so I was like, you know, this is, it, she, it's free, because you have to buy pawns with Rift Crystals, and then people are on your friends list are free. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't really complain. And I she, didn't know that. I'm going to yeah. have to go change that, because originally, origin, like, originally when I started the game out, it was, it was, very hard and it took me a while before yeah. I built up to a point where you know okay I can kind of handle my own now I changed classes <laughs> um and so that I always had made sure my pawn was there to protect me right so, but but as a as a range like as a mage where you know a bandit would run up and three shot me yeah that was no good because she'd be like I'll protect you master and I'll be dead <laughs> So, yeah, that, that's too funny. That was kind of annoying because, like I said, it, it, if I had a little more control over it, it would have been mm-hmm. a problem. I'd be yeah. like, okay, you can protect me. Protect me about 10 yards in front of me. Yeah, go over there or, so, or attack him. You right. Know, like, yeah. So, um, but we both agree the game looks great. Yeah, the, the visuals the world are really good. Is amazing. The boss battles are amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you're fighting griffins, um, ogres. I, I do have one complaint about the boss battles is. Uh, I guess that's not really a boss, but the bigger monsters. Yeah. The, the, I guess they're still bosses. Uh, nighttime in that game is really dark. Like, yes. I had all four of my pawns with lanterns. And, yeah. Dude, I got ambushed by a Cyclops and a Chimera at the same oh. time. I was, like, running against a cliff, and they were like, Master, watch out. And uh, uh, Chimera's like, oh, I get, I'm going to get you. And I'm like, all right. Well, Chimeras are kind of easy because they, they do a lot of attacks. They're kind of bright. So mm-hmm. it's like, okay. And then it was like, big hand out of nowhere. And I was like, what the hell is that? And it's like, another quest pops up. It's like, defeat your ambushers. And I was like, what's going on? And there was a Cyclops <laughs> wow. like, down the hill that had followed me up the hill that I never saw because it was so dark. Yeah. And it's just... That's, I, I, a wolf <laughs> attack at night is, al- is almost a death sentence. Right, because you're like, killing them, killing them, killing them. And, and actually, then, I've never died to wolves. Uh, because the nice thing about being a mage is... Uh, well, when I got to a sorcerer, I have really big, like, fire spells. They're weak against fire. Right, which <laughs> I guess we could say that the pawns are really annoying because they will say the same thing over and over and yeah. over again. And uh, it's like that one video I showed you where the pawn's like, um, he's like, Master, that tower up there looks like you could get a good vantage point. And you're like, I know, because we were just there <laughs> ten minutes ago. You were standing right next to me. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was funny. 
but overall, I think the pawn system was was pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was, a, it was unique. Yeah, it, it, I, I put in here. I somewhat agree that you like the pawn system, uh, and I actually just went over that. I think it would have been better if they gave you more control. Yeah, more so, control. But overall, the system was unique, and it's it's cool that you can go around and get your friends pawns. And you know, I can see that you really like your pawn in that silk lingerie. Yeah. So. Lingerie, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. And mine had a manly voice, which was no way intended, but, <laughs> man, she creeped me out. She's uh, like a Dr. Girlfriend from Venture Brothers. Yeah. But uh, this game, me, I'm a big fan of hack and slashers. Like, there, I haven't really played a really, I haven't played a good one in a really long time. Yeah. I think the last one I ever played was Baldur's Gate yeah. for PS2. Uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. I'm not sure if that's on uh, PlayStation Network or not, but if it is, yeah, I would it, pick it up. They're remaking... The we talked about it I think briefly, uh, but they're remaking Baldur's Gate as that's like an right. HD remake. Yeah, and that's coming, so that'll be cool. Um, but, yeah. but they were hard too. They were hard, but, but you cool. had complete control over your whole party. I liked I liked having I liked having a I liked Dark Alliance where I could uh, co-op with my brother. Mm-hmm. Me me and Marcus played through that game I don't know how many times. Yeah, so this game definitely definitely harkens back to, like, the older school yeah. RPGs in, in, a, in a big way, and I, I actually think that's a really good thing. Mm-hmm. So, and um, we already said that it, it's uh, really fun, and <laughs> the monsters and stuff are, are unique. I mean, yeah. they're they're all typical, like, Griffins, Chimeras, Cyclopses, but they're, I think they're unique. Hydra? We forgot the Hydra. Hydra. Yeah. Well, I haven't really messed with the Hydra too much. It came in our camp, messed with us, I cut your your pawn that was the one time your pawn actually did something <laughs> cut off its head because I was all like I'm gonna cast a fire and then the head came off I was like oh never mind <laughs> I'm gonna burn down that tent over there because you can't cancel spells once you cast them wow so you just gotta kind of aim them mm-hmm. I ran into that problem in town I was I was playing with some new spells oh, yeah. and like four people walked into my flame wall the guard <laughs> came running up he's like put you in jail yeah he's like you are under arrest I was like all right here's five thousand gold mm-hmm. he's like all right you're free. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what happens if you don't have the gold? I don't know. I, I should have found out. Maybe you just sit in jail for like 15 minutes or something. Yeah. Because that game really wants you to waste your time. Mm-hmm. Like all the side quests and stuff, like the MMO, MMO-ness yes. of the game, like kill 75 rabbits. Uh, <laughs> like kill a bunch of rats and stuff. All right, so that was all pros. Let's let's go into the comments. Okay, um, although I didn't really care about it, the story didn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, I, I like I said, I haven't finished it, and I knew I know story comes in a little later. Yeah. But there, there really isn't a whole lot of story, and it I. Was, it was, yeah. The sl- story was definitely slow to start. I don't think until the second set of like main quest missions where the story started to, you know, pick up. Un- yeah, pick up and unfold. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. The menus. Menus. So, oh gosh, the, like, the menu system is very cumbersome. Yeah, they, they, they could have did it a lot better. Yeah, I mean, like I wrote down here, um, Mass Effect reference. Remember how in Mass Effect One, the men, the inventory system was just crap. Right, because you had to manage everything from separate menus. Yep, that's exactly how it was in this game. Mm-hmm. But in Mass Effect Two, I mean, it was like beautiful because they dumbed it down. Yeah, they so dumbed much. it down so much. Like they need that for. They already confirmed with Dragon's Dogma 2, but they definitely fixed. need to fix that inventory system. This is right. too, it's there's just too much. There's right. too much going on there. It's, Would you say there's too much traveling by foot as well? <laughs> Wait, there's a lot. I mean, like I said, this game really wants you to waste a lot yeah, of time. Yeah, it really, yeah. There's a lot of Skyrim traveling. opens up uh, fast travel immediately as long as you've been there. Yeah, as long as you've been there, you can fast travel to a place in. Skyrim, and I like that, and in Fallout. Great. In this, this game, one. yeah, there, there, there's a port crystal system, you gotta pay for them, and like, say I'm a, I go to one point in the map, if I drop down a little port key, I can travel to that with a special stone or something. I mean, it, 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 it was, was convoluted. Yeah. And, yeah. It was, now, you, you had a problem with the camera. Yeah, um, I, yeah, like, you mentioned uh, with the camera but only during climbing. Right. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. When you're cl- yeah, when you're climbing, when you're climbing on mon- like you have the ability to climb up a monster, like you know, scale right. a cyclops to stab it in the back, or you know, try to right. get it in the eye, or 
grab, climb onto a griffin and it takes off and you're like stabbing it to make it fall back down. I mean, you're doing some amazing stuff in this game. But when you're climbing, there's just the occasional, you know, moment where the camera might get a little jerky where it's trying to figure out. Right, and yeah. you, you're pressing the direction and you're not going in the direction yeah. you want to go. Yeah. That's the problem I always had. It's like, it, it, if you're on like a monster's arm hanging under it, if you press up, do you go up the arm or do you go around the arm? Yeah. So, yeah, that that was kind of kind of cumbersome. Luckily, I didn't encounter that too much because I was a mage. Mm-hmm. And me climbing on stuff was a yeah, yeah. death sentence. Yeah. I think I climbed on one thing, and that was uh, when the chimera ambushed me the second time, which was just a chimera. And I had to climb up to cut the snake head off because your pawn was over picking daisies or something. Oh. And oh. I apologize. My, my, my pawn was... Out doing like out tanking him, but for some reason she wouldn't climb up anymore. because oh. I think she was just too busy like keeping his attention. Mm. So I was like, all right, well, I guess as a mage, I will pull my stick out and whack the snake head <laughs> until it falls off. That sounds really dirty. It does. <laughs> it does. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh. Only one save slot. Yeah. There's That's only one save stupid. slot. Stupid. Yeah. It is dumb. So like, <laughs> you can't create multiple saves. You can't really create multiple characters. The the only upside to that is you can be any class you want at any time, mm-hmm. but the stats are cumulative. So if yeah. you level as a mage, and say you make it to level thirty, you're gonna have more magic oriented stats than say somebody who leveled to thirty as a fighter. Yeah. So if you want to switch, uh, it's definitely harder, um, but it's not a huge degree because most of the stats come mm-hmm. from gear. Yeah, most of the stats come from your gear. So. Yeah. Um. There's no multiplayer in this game. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a big. For me. I, I think that would actually fix a lot of these other issues. Really? It really so, would. Um, I think uh, I, I enjoyed it as a free roaming game because it, it pretty much is a free roaming game. Once you, I'd say once you get to the main city, you can do a lot of stuff mm-hmm. free roaming style. Um, but there really isn't enough direction because what happens is um, you, get, you get the main story and you get started, and then they give you like 12 quests and you don't know which quest is for the main story anymore. Yeah. Because they're all generic. Like, yeah, they're all generic. Like, kill X this, kill Y that, stuff like that. And one of them is actually to progress the main story. Yeah, it's funny. Like, um, as much as, as convoluted as the menu system is and how everything is so detailed and tailor-made for this, that, and the other, the you, would think, you would think that the quest menu would have, like, some type of distinguishment between... Right. Which is the main quest, and which is just all the side stuff. Right. So. Because um, I, I just cause think that because I'm pretty sure it's in Fallout. I know it's in uh, Mass Effect. It's in Skyrim. Too. It's in Skyrim too. Yeah. Yeah, because they break it into the Skyrim actually breaks it into like main quest, side quest, and then like just random miscellaneous. Yeah. So um, the other downside I found is the class balance is actually extremely out of whack. Like mages, in one of the reasons I ended up playing it, have a much easier time in the game fighters hmm. um, because they just kill things so much faster like you saw me yeah that, that first cyclops i fought you said you fought for like 15 to 20 yeah, minutes that's and right. i dropped him in like what three yeah yeah that's right so i i think they need to i think they need to balance stuff i don't think they need to make the mages weaker though i think they need to make the other classes stronger um because it's it, in an mmo it's always better to bring classes down uh, because you want balance, and yeah. down is always the easier way to balance. Um, in a single-player game, you always want to bring your classes up, because you always want that single player to feel you uh-huh. know, powerful. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely felt weak. So, and yeah, I it, think, it wasn't until I started recruiting sorcerers and mages where right. I was like, okay, we're actually doing stuff. All right, so uh, overall, what, what would you give it? Overall, I'd give the game... I teeter between an 8... Out of ten, and but I w- decided to go with the eight point five. Okay. And I, d- I definitely think it's worth the money. I I don't feel cheated. I don't I don't feel <laughs> cheated pay, pay, paying the full price. Um, they already confirmed the sequel, and if they fix these issues, I mean, I it's gonna be a a really good game. I think uh, very enjoyable. And if it had multiplayer, ten out of ten. Oh yeah, if it had multiplayer, it definitely had to have ten out of ten. In my I don't know what's coming back here. <laughs> um, anyway, I I would probably give it about a 7.5 out of 10, maybe an 8 out of 10. Um, 
it's definitely worth it if you're an old school like Baldur's Gate RPG fan mm -hmm. uh, at the sixty dollars. Uh, however, like I mentioned earlier, if you're looking for like uh, if you played Skyrim to death and you're looking for the next Skyrim, this is probably yeah, not the is, game for you. This yeah, the game has heart, but it's just lacking a little bit of soul. Right. It, it's I, it, the combat's different. Everything's a lot different than Skyrim, um, and it it does feel a little too much single player MMO. -y. Like, uh, it, it kind of has that same problem uh, Amalor had, mm. except Amalor wasn't quite as punishing on you. Uh, <laughs> but there was a lot of go here, fetch quests, kill so many people, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, like I said, 7.5 out of 10. I think if they had multiplayer, it would fix all my issues, and I'd definitely give it at least a 9 out of 10. Um, but otherwise, that's, I think that's it for that's the week. That's pretty much it. We did actually did a, a little bit longer of a show this week, so we yeah. make up for cutting out early last week. Yeah, <laughs> and being off yep, the week before that. Right. Um, as always, we're looking for a few questions. You can send them to gamersdigestpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can check out our website, uh, gamersdigest.me, as in me. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, uh, Gamers Digest Podcast. Mm -hmm. I post... Uh, all the the podcast videos, as well as um, like World of Warcraft videos, other gameplay videos. Uh, occasionally, I upload small stuff. Uh, going back to the website real quick, we started adding reviews. Oh to the yeah, website. we did. Yeah. Um, yeah, you wrote the first one on Dragon's Dogma. Uh, I'm actually gonna retroactively add uh, a couple that I've done, like Spider Man. Yeah. Lollipop Chainsaw. You also did some classic ones on there. Yeah, I, I only have a siphon filter up there now. But um, more is coming. Yeah, more is coming. More is on the way. Um, hopefully tonight. Let's see. It's, it's getting a little. Yeah, it's getting a little late. I might get another one in there. We'll see. All right. Um, otherwise, uh, stay tuned every week. We usually try to start around 8:30. Sometimes a little later. Sometimes a little earlier. Uh, I usually stream uh, World of Warcraft, something World of Warcraft related Thursday nights, uh, and you know various streams here mm -hmm. and there. Uh, other than that, we will see you next week. See ya. You actually got it in that time. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to Pokemon. Gamers Digest is a Spider One and Mr. Factastic production. Send your questions to Gamers Digest Podcast at gmail.com. Intro music by MF Greth. Any music by Fapito. Check them both out at newgrounds.com.